Hi, everyone. Welcome back. I'm Art Baudo, and thank you all for joining us here at Cloud Infrastructure Day. I'm joined by my co-host still, Fiona. You are. Hello, everyone. My name is Fiona McCann. I'm a solutions architect in the public sector, and we're so grateful that you've all been joining us today. We're coming towards the end of the day, but we can't let you go without this fantastic uh, session on AI agents. You know, we've been talking about AI at edge, but I think it's also interesting to think about what that AI can be doing. And we're very lucky to have someone from the serverless team here with us. Vamsi, if you want to go ahead and introduce yourself. Sure. Thank you so much. Uh, I'm Vamsi Vikash. I'm a senior solution architect here at AWS. I work in the serverless space as a mm -hmm. specialist. I cover the media, entertainment, and gaming customers. <laughs> yeah, I feel like in a strange way, we've actually been building to this uh, segment <laughs> throughout the day. This because... whole day has been getting ready for you. Nice. <laughs> well, I, I, because I think we, we spent a lot of time talking about uh, a lot of the, the physical cloud components, the servers themselves. We spent time talking about Graviton, usage of Graviton. But everyone has also, uh, I believe, mentioned kind of their connection to the serverless mm -hmm. space as well right. and the importance of that. And there's a lot of customers, perhaps a lot of you who are developers out there, who are looking to use AWS and get started with AWS, but you don't want to de handle the overhead of managing some of this. And In that's fact, what serverless is about. We already have a comment from, who was it, Gen X Retro, who says, yay serverless. Yeah, exactly. So yay serverless, Gen X Retro. <laughs> no, I mean, seriously, because you know, this is one of the spaces, if you're starting you know, a, new, a startup or a small business, you know, why bother kind of uh, working in some of this, the, in that space? But we, you mentioned Agentic AI. I did. Which I know that you know, a lot of people have heard, but a lot of people kind of scratch their head, what the heck is Agentic AI? <laughs> right. So maybe we should start with ex defining you know, a, a evolutionary story here and what is Agentic AI and why it's gaining in popularity. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, if we have to start about like a story of like how it has been evolving, think of it like AI growing up, right? Yeah. Uh, if you think about it. <laughs> We're watching it grow up. I know, right? It's nice. Uh, in the beginning, what we ha we had something called the conversational AI, where mm. you ask the AI some question and then it responds back with yeah. with a response based on the information that it was trained on previously. Okay. And then we had something called RAG. I think we talked about it today. Yeah. Uh, well, we even had a diagram in the last segment amazing, showing right? usage of RAGs at the at the, at edge. the edge. Right. Exactly. So it's that retrieval augmented generation. What it means is that it's just you can before the AI answers gives you a response, it's going to check for some documents or maybe some external data sources or internet mm -hmm. to get the response back. Right. So now you're able to connect the LLM with the background information and external sources as well. Mm -hmm. Then we have the agentic AI, where it is like an advancement of all of these. Mm. And it allows you to do something like you ask the AI, hey, I need to schedule a meeting with my marketing team. Now it, the AI will respond back saying, hey, I got this for you. I'll and it, it will go check the schedules check the uh, email calendars on all of the participants that whom you're uh, looking for, mm -hmm. and then checks for drafts an email, and then sends out an email. How so, right. easy so is it? Yeah, it's... I know. So it's, it, it, sorry, Fiona. <laughs> no, 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 no you, go for it. I was just going to say, so you know, a lot of people think of AI as maybe dealing with a chatbot and getting an answer, then you take action. And maybe it's something simple like improving my email or something like that. Mm -hmm. And then I copy it and put it into my email and mm -hmm. send it out. Agentic AI and then adding in a rag is trying making it very specific. Maybe mm -hmm. you know it's very specific. I work at AWS. Maybe it made it more specific to AWS. That's combining the kind of rag with it. But now it's taking it to the next step. It, the Agentic AI is actually taking action. Right. Right. To That's do true. something. That's true. For somebody. That's okay. True. Especially in this digital world where like there's so many tasks that you have to take care. You just don't want like a conversation AI yeah, just to answer some right. answers. No, right? like, do we, my we things want, for Yeah, me. exactly. Do <laughs> things for Make you. Make my right? life easier. Yeah. 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 I need more vacation. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I mean. All right. So maybe one of the things we should do is, is give show folks a diagram about this, and we can you can explain to people a little bit more about uh, Agentic AI and how it works. And then we're going to get to a demo and uh, try to show the usage of Agentic AI here, right. which I'm kind of excited about. Absolutely. It's going to yeah. program Absolutely. some it. stuff for us. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. So, um, uh, so in this diagram, what you're going to see is how Agentic AI works behind the scenes. Hmm. So when we talk about Agentic AI, it works on, it can work on multiple frameworks. And today, like we are going to see the React framework. 
which stands for reasoning and action. Okay. So if you ask the uh, agent to do a specific task, it's going to say, hey, how do I achieve this task? And what are the steps that I need to do hmm. to, to achieve this task? Then it goes and sees like what are the tools that it has to achieve that task. Hmm. Okay. And then sends that information to the backend LLM and says that, hey, this is what I want to do. And it will associate each tool with the subtask that it has to achieve. And okay. together, you, so, you, you get things done. Yeah. Yeah. So you're saying when we are, you know, I'm seeing LLM model, I'm seeing knowledge bases here, I'm thinking potentially something like Bedrock. Correct. When a Bedrock agent is doing this, this is all happening behind the scenes. That's correct. And behind the scenes, this agent is saying, OK, one, two, three are the steps I need to do. One, two, three are the tools I need to do the step. And here's the output. But you, as the person who's you know benefiting from this agent, you don't actually get to see into this agent exactly what's happening. Exactly, exactly. And again, um, it could be any agent for that fact, right? Like it could be a Bedrock agent. You could be running your own agent. And we also have these trans, uh, the newest SDK that we have, like mm -hmm. uh, that, that we're using which like you can build your agents. But the key is. Now, what happens behind the scenes within the agent, that's what like, we are going to see. OK. OK. Yeah, and um, just a call to folks out there. I first want to ask, has anybody utilized uh, yeah. Agentic AI? Are you building or actively working on an AI agent? Comment in the chat channel. Let, let us, us know. know. And the second thing is just to the earlier point, since we are also covering serverless here, does anyone have a favorite serverless uh, service that they use at AWS. I think EKS is probably one of the more popular ones, so I'll throw that out there. Yeah. As anybody using EKS or other server serverless service, let us know. Drop us that in the chat, and we'll kind of uh, walk through it as well. So maybe we should start uh, actually going through some of the, the demo that we had had planned here as well to show show people how some of this agentic AI and this AI agent uh, works here using serverless. Absolutely. Well, let's do it. Let's do the demo. And if we have to think about it, like for this purposes of this demo, like I'm using a simple um, chat, I mean chat bot, I could say. Yeah. And that chat bot sure. is going to help you. Let, let's assume you're a busy professional but who likes enjoy playing tennis. And then I do enjoy playing tennis. That's amazing. I'm not right? good at playing tennis. But like how, do, I'm terrible. How, but how I, you... I, I, yeah, <laughs> but I could go. Yeah. So but how, how, I mean have you do you remember like uh, how difficult or frustrating it is to book a tennis court? You know, it's so difficult to book a tennis court that I would give anything for an AI agent to do it for that's me. That's amazing, right? Like that's what <laughs> we have built it today and like right. we have this AI agent uh, which takes care of like booking the tennis court for you. And what it does behind the scenes, it's going to do a couple of tasks. It's going to use a couple of tools, which we're going to take a closer look. But let's go ahead and introduce ourselves to the agent Hello. itself and say, uh, hey, which uh, may not be a good use of the LLM, but still, like, we're <laughs> going to use it. <laughs> no, I, th I look, I mean, as we said in our other session, you know, I, I mean, I know that it uses resources, but I, I think you need to be nice to the AI I agent. Think so too. I'm just saying, right? I'm, yeah, who knows? I'm also, get, we're getting some comments about pickleball and how these people's tennis courts have been converted to pickleball courts. I do have to say, I'm better at pickleball than tennis. And maybe you are too. Who here prefers pickleball? Who here prefers tennis? Oh, wow. Today, we're only booking a tennis court, though. <laughs> but maybe this but place this does allow pickleball, too. But maybe this place also too, does, right? does pickleball. Exactly. So yes. you never know. Yeah. This no. is fully customizable. You can use it there for any, right. any There we go. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so now if we see, like we just greeted it with a hello, and behind the scenes, what has happened is it went through this execution workflow hmm. that you see on the right. So it started with the invoke model, which means it made a request to our Bitrock agent okay. to uh, ask for some information about, like, hey, the user greeted with hello, mm. what should I do? Right. And I'm designed for a specific purpose, and that's for booking the code rooms. So it says that, oh, OK, that's just a greeting information. I don't need to send any data back to the user okay. other than just a greeting. Or like I don't need to use any tools, specialized tools, to right. respond back to the user. So now it sees that, oh, OK, this is, this is the information. And then it responds back with this information. Okay. Um, so this is good. So let's go ahead and say, I want to book a quote. Yeah. And then when I say, I want to book a quote for tomorrow, it's going to see, oh, OK, I need to use some tools. <gasps> Time for the tools to come in. Right, Time exactly. to make some action. As you see here, like it starts to run behind the scenes. And it says, uh, but you got the response here seeing that, 
hey, I see that like you want to book a code for tomorrow, and it asks for some additional information. Mm. And I'm going to say, which time do you prefer? Any time preferences? Uh, what time do we prefer? I, th China? I say 7 p.m. Because 7 PM? you know, be okay. at 10 and 11, I have to work. That's actually a good point. No pickleball. No, or you. or yeah, no, maybe I'll ask my boss if I can take 10, <laughs> 10 to maybe. 12. 10 yeah. to 12. Yeah, if it's 10 to 12. Ball, to, maybe your boss also yeah. likes yeah. It's for work. Right? Yeah, let's 10 do it. Let's, do it. Yeah, let's, let's get started. Do it. 10 a.m. at facility one, and it says what time of the day, how many players? Maybe for a group of four. Sure. Who's yeah. our fourth yeah. player? Yeah. Uh, one, two, three, four. One, two, yeah. Three, four. yeah. <laughs> you, our audience. Exactly. And we'll do the outdoors because it's all nice and sunny here in Seattle. Hmm. Yes, that's true. What is it? I know. It's a beautiful it's summer a rare, day. It's a rare <laughs> it's sight. Rare, it's a rare sight, but yeah. No. No. <laughs> you should encourage people. Come on. All right, this is the part I really enjoy going, being able to take a look directly at cool. the model mm -hmm. and look at all of the things that it had to evoke, be, invoke, excuse me. Because when you looked at the previous example and we just had said hello to mm -hmm. it, even at that simplistic example, right. it says, it, yeah, it, it's giving us an indication that it doesn't have to open up another language model or anything mm -hmm. and it's simplistic, but it also shows you kind of the thought process behind it as well, right. just to put up the initial prompt, like, oh, okay, all that happened was someone asked me a set of simple exactly. things. Let me, you know, all I do is query people about courts, uh, tennis courts in this case, you know, how to exactly. go through that. And it gives like more control and visibility into like your actual agentic infrastructure itself. Yes. But this is just a simple demo, but like this can go as complicated as like a multi-agent system, mm. where this workflow is only talking about like a single agent. But think about like another workflow talking about like doing a different task. Like an executor agent exactly. that's then giving directions to other Correct. agents. And then yeah. like, now can, I have an army of agents. And we can integrate like these within the step functions too. Mm -hmm. So we can have like a nested workflow that can talk about like talk with multiple agents. Mm -hmm. And you have exactly like where the flow is going through. through yeah. flow. And I think that people may think, okay, we have this uh, simplistic example here showing uh, about booking a court at a pool. Uh, for tennis, excuse me, I was saying pool. But, you know, um, uh, but, you know, you can envision a world where you're interfacing with a club that is not just has the singular tennis court here, it has other things that they might, other services that they could provide, right. you know, and scheduling services. And maybe, you know, you give them access to a common calendar or something and you want to book, I don't know, something else and it starts to say, oh, I don't know why you're saying 10 o'clock. Uh, you know, your calendar is saying <laughs> you're busy at 10 o'clock right. or something so this like is, that. You're saying integration with not integration only with the, the tennis courts calendar, but your personal your work personal calendar. Your personal calendar, right. And your manager said you're not allowed to go at 10 o'clock. Right. <laughs> he would not say that. <laughs> of course not. Yeah, no. But no, you get the, like, Cause, exactly. Because I can see this <laughs> this smaller model starting to expand in a, a lot of other different spaces that can be really practical. And Gen X Retro actually also just came up with a, a good use case where they said, find me the nearest open court that's closest to an urgent care facility, just oh. in case. <laughs> All right. Like see, a fellow Gen Xer. <laughs> there you is, go. There we go. Yeah, no, no. Uh, I didn't want to say that that's where I judge things, but right, you know, maybe. it could be a good idea. All right. Let's, uh, yeah. w why don't we move forward? a little uh, bit here now we're yeah. before we go i mean like it's asking for the name but like i mean like uh, i want to take a closer look into this particular workflow right so mm. now it invoked the model and it it sees that hey i need to get the schedule and okay. it fetched the schedule for us and it gave the information hey this is the information that is this piece actually uh, right. so when we got the all the schedules, like we got all the information, and it creates a message array and then sends the response back. What the message array does here, and technically, is it's going to group all the information that we had through the conversation in the chatbot. It's going to append and like store it. Okay. So mm. because like Lambda function, which we are using it as tools, mm -hmm. are stateless, mm -hmm. so it doesn't maintain any state. Right. However, to maintain the state, like we are using uh, this message array. Uh, let's go ahead and say, hey, this is the name for which like, we need to book oh, the a code. That's a nice name. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we, we see that like it's going to run, and then like it's going to say, oh, OK, I need to book. I mean, these are the three tools I have here, right? Like yeah. either you can book a code, fetch the schedules, or get the booking status too. Hmm. So in this particular scenario, what it has done is it sees that, oh, I need to book the code. I have all the information that I need to book the code. Right. And 
it also checks for the confirmation of that code itself. And then it mm -hmm. gets the information back to the user. If at all, if one of the scenario failed, let's right. say uh, the booking failed for some reason, maybe like we provided some wrong information or like mm -hmm. we didn't provide some additional information, then the workflow is going to fail. And we need to capture that yeah. like in the front end. Too. Well, I was going to say, I can imagine that that's you know, one of the big benefits of having this type of setup is that because it is spaced out step by step and you have that type of visibility, when there is an error, you can catch it. Right. Can I put you on the spot and say, can we try to force an error and see what that looks like? Let's try it. Um, let me go ahead and refresh this one. And I'm going to do something interesting here. All right, let's go. Um, let's say, do I have a reservation for tomorrow? Under the name, well, say Vikash for right. 10 a.m. But here, I'm not going to specify which facility I booked the code. In, okay. Okay. Which is a required parameter to get the booking status. Yeah. Uh -huh. So now, uh, this particular demo doesn't catch that information. Mm -hmm. It's going to fail, and then like it's going to show an error. Right. That can typically happen in case like when you're having uh, when you're executing with uh, agents, right? Hmm. It can fail. But you don't know like what has happened behind the scenes. Now, as you see here, we we got the unexpected uh, application error. However, what can what we could do is like behind oh, the scenes, yeah. we can go back and see. Oh, okay. There's something that's that has gone wrong, and like what has gone wrong, like we can take a closer look into it. Uh, let's see. Yeah, I'd love to see what the error message is. Right. So it's once once the once the page loads, like you, you're going to see something like, hey, the facility information is missing, or like mm -hmm. we are. We are missing out some part of the information that is needed for making the reservation right. itself, right? We have a comment that says subtech bro. I'll toss it right back at you, subtech bro. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, here, if we go take a closer look into it, like we see that like the task failed, this particular task failed mm -hmm. for the booking status. Right. And it says the facility name. Um, I mean, I didn't do much of error catching here, like good job of error <laughs> catching. But like you could respond back from the tool saying that, hey, you're missing out that piece of information. But, but this mm -hmm. information can now be used to be fed back in to fix the problem exactly. that is that has happened. Exactly. I think you know that's, that's one of the great things about this implementation exactly. and also mm -hmm. about in this case using serverless is is, is how simple uh, okay, we realize what the problem is. Okay, they didn't. The person didn't supp supply a facility name. We obviously, perhaps in our our flow workflow, didn't account for the fact that we should have now respond with something saying, "Hey, could you know what facility you are?" Or, or maybe now this gives rise. How many people are asking this? Maybe we need to search multiple facilities or something like that right. to make a to to make a, a change here. But now this helps us solve that. Right. Now we exactly. know where to start to fix it. Exactly, and and if we see here, like I mean, we are going to we are, we we have we are just like passing the message back to the next task. Mm -hmm. However, if we want, like we could also like you know like edit the state mission to include that as a retry parameter here. Uh, this is also an out, but like if uh, just to get, give you an idea here, so this is the getting booking status, mm -hmm. and with simple information here, you can just like do what do you want to do? What is the payload that you want to send? What is the next state? Uh, what happens if there is a failure? Like, how are you going to do the error handling? So the retries all that information, yeah. and like it, it can you can visually configure this from the console itself or yeah. through the ASL. Program. Yeah, I, I think this is uh, okay. This has been a lot of fun Fantastic and also a, a great way to show people how to get started, how to do some error debugging, all using uh, serverless here. I think there's a lot of powerful tools here, Definitely. Fiona, that everybody can get behind. I would really encourage everybody to try some of the serverless implementations yeah. that are out there and Just give it a shot. It. As Absolutely. well, I think it's really fun, and it combines so many of our other uh, cloud infrastructure right. examples. So I want to thank uh, Vance Meech for joining us today, Absolutely. and thanks for coming on. Oh, and thanks, talking to us. thanks, Art, and thanks, Fiona. Thanks so much. Thank you all.